Good afternoon, my Real News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update for March 4, 2024. And in the news this afternoon, sentence delayed for convicted killer of regular girl Terania Clark. Courtney Rowe, attorney at law representing Rochelle Foster, the woman found guilty of manslaughter for the 2019 stabbing death of regular girl's midfielder Terania Plum Plum Clark, wants his client to receive a non-custodial sentence in the matter. The 23-year-old national footballer, who was also the captain of the Waterhouse Football Club's women's team, was stabbed with a knife during a dispute over a cellular phone in Halfway Tree, St. Andrew, on October 31, 2019. Foster was originally scheduled for sentencing last Thursday at the Home Circuit Court, but given references and the suggestions from Roe that a non-custodial sentence be levied, Justice Leighton Pusey delayed the sentencing until March 15. I am asking that in your deliberation of the sentence that you look to the lower end of the spectrum and start certainly at a lower range and a lower starting point. When you look at the social inquiry report, it indicates that she was brought up in a nuclear family. She had good upbringings, Rose said, of which the judge interrupted by saying, I've read the report. The report indicated, and I'd like you to take into great consideration, that she recognized the impact and the consequences of the offense. Ms. Foster is not one to be considered a contact with a negative peers or criminal associates. Ms. Foster is stated as being literate, employed, and skills trained, and I ask that you find that she is someone that can be and is fit to be considered someone possible for rehabilitation, he said. Rose said the foreman, who stood on behalf of the judges of the facts, indicated that the jury did not find that Foster had an intention to kill Clark, thus his request for her to get the least possible sentencing. If for the offense of manslaughter, which I'm saying is guideline references as voluntary manslaughter, the starting point is five years, I ask that your lordship, in considering a sentence, start with a lower range, given that the verdict is really that of involuntary manslaughter, based on the utterance of the foreman on behalf of the jury, he said. Roe then continued with his argument in favor of rehabilitation for the offender. I also ask that in seeking to promote retribution, deterrence, prevention, and rehabilitation, your lordship gives a credence to the words of Justice of Appeal MacDonald Bishop where she emphasized the need for the sentencing judge to keep in the mind the objective of sentencing against the background of the nature of the seriousness of the offense, the circumstances surrounding its commission, and the personal circumstances of the offender, Rose said. Ms. Rochelle Foster was tried before the court for the offense of murder. She was found not guilty of murder, but instead of manslaughter. I'm confident that your lordship, in pronouncing the sentence, will give thought to the sentencing guidelines for judges of the Supreme Court and the parish court, he said. He said the starting point, based on the guidelines, is usually five years. When Roe questioned the judge as to why there would be a delay, given that Thursday was the scheduled date for the sentencing, Pusey said, Mr. Roe, you mentioned law. You had particulars you refer to. You would not expect me to have considered them seriously, and it means if I consider them seriously, I would take some time to consider them. Prior to the discussion, Roe called on a witness, paralegal clerk Maureen Jonas Lynch, a little after a minute from the start of the proceedings and before he started his plea, of which the judge agreed to hear for six minutes, but only four minutes were used. Lynch testified that she knows a foster from she was born. I don't have any challenge with her, and she growing up in our community, we have never had any challenge, violence or any bad with her, Lynch said. She noted that she was aware of the offense Foster had been found guilty of, and when she heard about the conviction, it was really a sad occasion for the family. Nobody in the family had ever had this challenge, and it was really sad. She's not a bad person. It's just an unfortunate situation happened, Lynch said. She asked the court to have some leniency on her, seeing that she is not a violent person. Following her testimony, Foster was asked to stand in the prisoner's dock, where it was reiterated to her that she was found guilty on January 18, and she was asked if she had anything to say, of which she indicated to decline. Prior to standing and during the proceedings, the young woman repeatedly shook her left leg 
while wearing a mask, fashionable tiger print glasses, white blouse, blue jeans and a burgundy scarf, and a single parted cream hairstyle caught in a ponytail. The Social Enquirer report on Foster, dated February 26, 2024, forms a part of the records and the purposes of sentencing. Also, the antecedent report of Foster, which confirms that she has no previous convictions, done on January 8, 2024. New Mocha Councillor says voters rejected tribal politics. Newly minted People's National Party councillor elect for the Mocha division in Clarendon North Central, Romain Morris, said his victory in last week's local government elections proves Jamaicans are moving away from tribal politics. Morris had won the seat on a Jamaica Labour Party ticket in 2016, but crossed the floor to the PNP in January following a fallout with a member of parliament, Robert Nestor Morgan. On February 8th nomination day, people in the division said they would vote for Morris regardless of the party he is aligned with, and this was proven to be true on Monday. Speaking with the news following Monday's election, Morris said, People want real representation. People now are exploring what can you do for us, if you have our best interest at heart. Persons don't want to support a system that is tribal. He added, I think the days of die-hearted politics, even on the part of supporters and representatives themselves, are behind us. Die-hearted politics has caused Jamaica a significant amount of damage over the years. Explaining the damage he believes has been caused by tribal politics, Morris said this has been evident in the low voter turnout for the past five elections as the confidence in the country's political representatives has been decreasing each year. Following the election, Electoral Commission of Jamaica reported that approximately 29.6% of an electorate numbering more than 2 million registered voters had the cast of ballots, which is a slight decline from the 30.06% for 2016. Persons saying they won't be voting, and I think it has been declining for the past five or six elections. There's a constant trend of low voter turnout. That is something that either political party has to look at and examine and see how best they can attract these persons because something is wrong with the model that they are using now, Morris stated. Nevertheless, the councillor elect said he feels very appreciated by the people he represents in the Moko division. They recognize my dedication to them. I feel extra special, and I really respect the Moko people, even more to know that they can recognize talent because persons always say that seat is a die-hearted JLP seat. And when you realize that persons actually move away from the traditional party to follow another person, you have to say yes to them because now they know what they really want," he said. Moko is one of the divisions that have proven to Jamaica that the die-heartedness is fading out and persons now can vote on the merit of performance and what you do bring to the table. I think that conversation is starting now, and it started in Moko, a good place for it to start," he continued. Looking to hit the ground running towards the development of his division, Morris said he intends to ramp up some new ideas that had been shelved for some time, including the well-known problem of bad roads that he said has plagued the area as well as the social interventions. Additionally, he insisted that despite the differences he has had with MP Morgan, he will lend his support with any of his projects that have the people's best interest at heart.